It is time for your weekly breakdown on the latest in entertainment, sports, pop culture, and all things Milwaukee. This is Nothing But The Truth with Melanie Ricks. Now streaming on 1017 The Truth YouTube with the witty banter, latest trends on social media, and hottest celebrity topics, here is Melanie Ricks. I like how differently we like jam to this. Like your like vibe is kind of like okay, but I'm over here like uh yeah. No yeah, yeah you yeah, yeah you getting jiggy yeah, with it. I'm back here yeah, smooth yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I like that though. I like that vibe. I like that energy. What's up? What's up, y'all? Hello and welcome to the debut. It's day one, show one of nothing but the truth with Melanie Ricks, the digital show. I'm super excited to be here. In the stew with my guy, Jason Smith. Jason, how are you? I am doing absolutely fantastic. I am very happy. The fact that, you know, I'm here with you. I'm happy to be here with you. revamped yes, edition. Yes, yes. I'm so excited. Um, so, for those who have followed the Nothing But The Truth journey, we used to be a daily show on 1017 The Truth on the radio lineup. We're still part of the lineup. But now we've entered this digital space, if you will, and we'll be coming at you once a week. Every Wednesday, you'll get a new video drop. And I'm super excited because we're here in the studio. We're in the 1017 The Truth studio. So it's giving like we're still here at home. You know, we still got the Truth logo everywhere. We got the familiar space. But now we're doing it on a digital only platform. So it's a little bit different for us. But I'm really excited and um, I'm thankful to those of you who are watching us and I hope that you enjoy our witty banter, as the guy said in the beginning. That's funny. When I heard that, I'm like, oh, so I got to be witty. Okay. I think I can do that. You're already witty, man. That I come I easy. That. I think I can do that. That's funny. Um, so I want to do something that I actually like, kind of hate doing, but I feel like would be necessary. Jason, can you tell the people one thing about yourself? What's something that you want people to know about you? And the reason why I say I hate that question because then I'm like, oh, man, there's so many things I want everyone to know about me. But if you could just find and just say one thing, what would it be? That I am an avid learner. I love to Ooh. learn. I love to research. I love to read. Okay. I love just getting new information. I yeah. love applying it. I like hearing different perspectives and creating one from those different perspectives. For sure. Have you been that way your whole life? I f yeah, I've been, I've been that way my whole life. Like, okay. I mean, because I grew the way I grew up, like I grew up in a real, I don't want to say... It it wasn't strict or nothing like that, but it was a church family. Like my family owned churches okay. and stuff. Oh wow! So yeah, oh, man, that is strict. I think it's strict. He's like, I don't want to say it, but somebody else in the room can. I'll say it for you. That's a strict family, I'm sure. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I feel like I always been that way. It's just after college or during college, it just went to another level. Yeah. Okay. Really? What yeah. do you oh, mean? Oh, without question, it went to another level because like I was in in college, I'm seeing a whole different group of people i'm seeing just everything is different and yeah. i'm solo i'm alone for the first time right right so then my mind started going like hmm i wonder this i wonder okay, that I and see. now i got the freedom to go research and do whatever right, i want without right. asking family and them telling me you for know. sure well and like i feel like there's also like let's be honest there's certain restrictions that are put on all of us when it comes to how much we're allowed to learn about the world around us and i think you know like obviously partially your generation but especially the one that's following it's all social media in their lives you know they don't know a world without social media and so you know unfortunately for the parents these kids are exposed to so many different things you know whether or not the parents want them to be but what's great about it too is that you are exposed to different sports you know different activities different ideas that maybe you wouldn't have been exposed to because you grew up in a tiny little village called Brown Deer in the state of Wisconsin. You know what I'm saying? Shout Be out. proud, man. You know what I'm saying? That's where Jason and I are both from. That's where we both went to school. So that's pretty dope, I think. I think that's really awesome. But um, Falcon Pride all day. But obviously, there's like so much, only so much you can learn, you know, when you are growing up in such a small town. Um, but that's what's great about social media. It teaches you things and it it gives you the opportunity to explore other options. And for you, someone who is, you know, a lifelong learner, as you said, I think it's great to have social media literally at your fingertips always. And then when you think about the young kids who aspire to be different things, they're exposed to, you know, their heroes, but then also exposed to other like just things that they can be that maybe they didn't know when they were younger that that was even a possibility. And 
that reminds me of just the different you know, I guess athletes, I'll say in general, that we see come out of the Olympics. Obviously, the Olympics just finished, and it was very successful for the U.S. I thought it was really fun. It was a great Olympics in Paris. Uh, By the way, 2024 Paris, 100 years ago was when they last had the Olympics in Paris, so 1924, and a lot of things have changed since then, Jason. One thing that was brand new, never seen it before, for the first time ever, the U.S. had equal number men and women, for the Olympics as they did for the Paralympics as well, which uh, actually is starting this week, the Paralympics, by the way. So make sure y'all support uh, the Paralympics and uh, y'all watch that. But it's pretty dope when you see, you know, those type of figures and you think about how different the Olympics were 100 years ago. How cool is it that you see so many women in particular dominating? I mean, Jason, maybe I'm being biased as a woman, but I feel like they were really taking over the headlines. Hey, listen, the women went crazy the women <laughs> went insane and i think it's only go go up from here i think we are just starting to really see because you look at how they dominated like yeah. you look at what they did and yeah. why would it stop now why we, would it stop now we're literally going to keep going i think so too and you know i said that it was the u.s and actually it was the olympics as a whole that had equal number of men and women so it wasn't just the u.s like as an entirety the olympics had equal number of men and women as contestants and that's a really big deal to see that and I agree with you I think that we're definitely going to see that continue to trend like Beyonce obviously had the song who run the world and I think that there have obviously been a lot of different like woman themed anthems like uh um I really like the song I feel like a woman and then by the way we're on YouTube now so we can't just play any song we want um but then also (laughs) it's a little different now (laughs) man it's a little different that's okay. We'll 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 work our way around it. We're gonna start being like kids bop and coming up with our own versions of these songs. It's funny. Um, but then also you got the song like God is a woman. Like there's like different songs that are like woman anthems. And I really do think that we we are starting to see a world where the takeover of the female, of the woman, of the the feminine power, the feminine mind. I think it's really happening. But how do you feel about that as a man, Jason? Are you okay with that? I'm all cool with it. Listen, listen. I'm the type of dude. I think women are God's greatest creation. Period. They give Talk to life. Me. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? Like yes. they give life. Okay. Wait like a what, what Tupac say? Come on now. We come from a woman, so why would we would want to do anything? You know what I'm saying? I heard of woman. So no, I'm all for it. I think that it's long overdue for women to be looked at and like you know the right light. We're finally getting the love. I mean, you look all across. All types of sports, like movies, like all types of stuff. You see women are rising up yes. to the spot where they were always destined to be. I think so, too. And then you think about, like, the Barbie movie, which was so popular. And it's so funny to think about because, obviously, there there was a lot of rhetoric even surrounding that movie because people were like, well, uh, on one hand, sure, it's great. It's a, a female empowerment movie. movie. We want our, our little girls to see this and feel like they can do anything Obviously, Barbie's always been such a great representation of the woman, you know, minus the fact that she had an impossible waistline and the biggest boobs you've ever seen on a tiny waist like that. But that aside, like, you know, she really did show us that a woman could be an astronaut and be a doctor and be a teacher and be all of these things that, like, maybe growing up, a lot of young girls, they didn't necessarily, they weren't told or taught that, you know? And so I think Barbie's great in that, but then people didn't like the message that the movie sent, which was, she's Barbie, she's amazing, she's great, she's magical, and he's just Ken. But, like, also, I feel like we've been going through it for years. Like, I feel like even though men haven't necessarily, actually, no, they have said it. Jason, let's just say it how it is. Men have definitely said, nah, she's just a woman. Women couldn't even um, own property until I think the 70s without a man signing off on it in, in the U.S., But, like, even that alone, it's like, what is it about us that makes you think that we need a man to have a lease? You know what I mean? So that we can have our own property. Like, it's just crazy. And so I feel like, to your point, like, yeah, we are catching up and we're doing the things that we've always been destined to do. But can we do it without feeling like we got to take down a man at the same time? Because, like, even the conversation about the Olympics... I feel like there were definitely some where people were saying, oh, women are really dominating and the uh, women are carrying uh, Team U.S. and women have more gold medals than the men here and this and that. Does it have to be that? Does it have to be this competition? You know what I mean? Or can we just like both exist while knowing that women are dominating everything right now? Like, is that possible? Yes, I think it has to be possible. We have to coexist. That's the only way that we ever going to get 
to the mango, and that's obviously unity. The only yeah. way that we ever gonna get know, stuff though, really Jason. accomplished. I don't know. Like you, you see, like unity? with the WNBA, the reason why, uh, like something like the WNBA, the fact that. The male NBA players are supporting going to the WNBA, yeah. going to the games, Facts. hyping the game up. Facts. You know what I'm saying? It but helps. are men okay with the idea that we may eventually end up taking over y'all space? Like, be be honest, because you know what I'm saying? We on YouTube now. We don't got FCC patrolling and making sure. Like, I want you to speak your mind because I think that y'all are okay with it until you're not. Like, it's cute for y'all to come support us, but then once we start doing numbers – and you see yours decline, I don't know if the men are going to be as okay with that. See, I, I, I didn't want to come on and, you know, seem like sexist or nothing like that. <laughs> but I do, listen, that, it's going to be, be an uphill battle right. for women to actually take over oh. everything. That, that's still an uphill battle. Really? I, I think that time is coming for women to, you know, get be like this, yeah. where everybody is seeing men and women yeah. on an equal playing field. Yeah. That's coming. Mm-hmm. But for women to take over, yeah. hold on now, let's slow down. Oh, yeah, let's slow, slow down. down. No, okay, okay, pump the brakes. Y'all are, we're, we're lucky that we had an even number at the Olympics. I, I'm picking up what you're throwing down. No, I'm just kidding, I need to say that. But, okay, let me ask you this then, because another uh, thing that I've been seeing on social media in regards to women taking over and dominating in the Olympics, and you brought it up, the WNBA, people were saying, okay, first off, uh, gorgeous, beautiful, like the most... I, I can't even believe that you're a real creature, women, at the Olympics. And I say that because, like, the the track stars, the gymnasts, there were women who I'm just like, so you're perfect in every way. Got it. Love that for you. And you have a gold medal from the Olympics. That's cool. Whatever. And people were saying, though, they were, like, kind of joking, like, oh, like, all these women from the U- – or not the U.S., I'm sorry, in the Olympics are so gorgeous. Is that partially why some of their countries chose to select them, not even just based off their skill because – I'm not going to name any sports. I'm not going to name any countries, but there were definitely some where uh, we found out after the fact that uh, homegirl knew such and such as cousin, and that cousin happened to be on the committee that was choosing the athletes for that particular sport. Got it. Like, there were a lot of those stories that kind of, like, started seeping out. Um, And then some people were saying, and this is so crazy to even think, Jason, but it was a message on social media, our country's choosing, like, their best looking athletes in addition to their most athletically gifted athletes. Like, is it about like showing like, yeah, everyone here is beautiful and everyone here is also athletically gifted. And they were saying that in comparison to the U S who, and of course this is always going to be like a biased argument, if you will, the U S naturally has all this beauty and naturally has all this athleticism or other countries trying to compete in both categories with us. That being said, do you think that the reason why women athletics are becoming more power, like popular, I guess, not powerful, popular, because they've always been powerful, is it because the women are getting more attractive as well? And that's a very subjective, like open-ended question, but that's what people are saying, that you're seeing more women with the hair and the nails and the makeup, and they're actually like doing things that are more like about like the beauty of it all and the sport of it all. Do you think that's part of the takeover at all? I'm just curious. It is. Without question. Of, of course it is. Are you kidding me? You, you look like, like you were like, duh. <laughs> beautiful women <laughs> always. Dude, like whenever I'm turning on the TV, I'm watching the news, I'm watching anything, they have a beautiful woman sitting there. You, you turn on ESPN, more, it's oh, a beautiful okay, woman in there. Regard, you, you go see the athletes. The athletes are beautiful. Yeah. Look, listen, I think looks matter. Both ways, though. I think, think looks do? No matter what nobody say, I know everybody goes say, oh, looks don't matter. Looks matter. (laughs) Like, they matter. When somebody, when you see somebody more, like, attractive, you, your eyes naturally gravitate towards that. It's just nature. Hmm. So do you think that that's how women can continue to take over? Do you think we have to, I, I, I guess, dress ourselves to the male gaze? And I hate to say it that way, but I'm a straight woman, and that's what I dress for. Like, when I'm getting cute... I'm going to be on Like, I actually know. I, I take that back. I like it if a woman compliments my outfit because I look at it a little bit more like she's a fashionista. She knows what she's talking about. Whereas a man, I look at it like, yeah, he's cute and I want him to think I'm cute. But, like, I, I own that. I own that. When I dress, I want somebody to think I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just dressing for me. But do you think that's how we continue to dominate? And is that okay? Like, is that a message that you're okay teaching your daughter one day? Not maybe not you literally teaching her that, but understanding Beauty is part of success. I think it's that way for the man, too. Like, if a man, if a man coming in looking crazy, like, because for a man, instead of maybe it's not, like, the handsomeness or whatever, but you want a man who got 
status. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? They yeah. dress in a certain way. They look in a certain but way. Is, does money certain make jewelry. you handsome, though, all of a sudden? I'm just asking the questions. Wait, say that again? Does money make you handsome? Because, like, a man can cut his hair, uh, get a certain fade, or just do something different, and all of a sudden you're like, who are the, who is this man? You know what I'm saying? Whereas a woman, I feel like there's a lot of different tweaks we have to, I don't know, maybe that's just me speaking from a woman's standpoint, but I feel like, men, it's easier to, like, go from, like, you know, the, the goose to the swan. Without question. It's really? way easier for yeah. me. Like, right. I, would, I would be completely honest. Yeah. Dude, if a man, honestly, a man with status is mm-hmm. already good. Like, if you got money and you got status, you already, it's going to be so many. Why for a woman? For, a, for women, I think it's a little bit different. Okay. Like, I think status matters with a woman, but men, the way, when men, when we see women, the first thing we see is the exterior, the oh, physical. Yes, yes. So that's the first thing we could ever okay. quote unquote judge okay. is how you look. So okay. we like, okay, dang, she cute. That's okay. Valid, no, she ba- okay, now let me go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talk to her to see what's going on. That's valid. I can't really see, I mean, unless you hopping out of a Rolls Royce and right. you know, but how does that even really matter? Know? I don't think a man cares if you hop, hop out of a Rolls Royce or a Honda Civic. I don't think y'all care. No. Okay, I didn't think so. Now you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if she is, that's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can flex, I can brag, you know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. That like, I almost feel like y'all prefer if she's in that Honda Civic because then it's easier to flex. I mean, no offense to Honda Civic. I love me a Honda Civic. I'm just saying. You feel what I'm saying? Of course you know, I, I do. What A girl, what girl, you know, I, I'll be asking these girls, listen, would you rather cry in a Honda or would you cry in a BMW? You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Of course, of course. I mean, but depending on the leather, I don't want to ruin the leather. So, like, pull the Honda Civic up. So I'll cry in that and then I'll ride off once my tears have dried. You feel me? In the BMW. Exactly. <laughs> no, but I definitely feel you. That's so interesting. And I, I definitely feel like part of, you know, the the women taking over things, social media, It's it's got a big part of that, of course. And... You know, we talk about women's impact just on the world itself, the world around us. And I think that there is so much like femininity and and just like womanness and everything. But there is still this whole like, hmm, what I want to call it, male ego that runs this world, unfortunately. And I think that it runs this world in a lot of different ways. Now, that being said, I want to be very clear. I love men. I love how y'all can be. Um, what do I want to say? Very strong and very manly and masculine. Yeah. Oh, flex the muscles. Yeah. Build my furniture for me. Uh, like, I love that about you guys. But the ego gets you in trouble. It gets you in trouble, Jason. I'm sorry it does. Like, it, 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 some people, some women love a man with a big ego. And I don't mean that the metaphorical sense, Beyonce. I'm talking a literal ego. Um, We also like, anyway. So the the big ego of it all, like, it's cute for a while until it's not cute. For example, we were talking about the Olympics. Noah Lyles. I mean. Man. Jason. Man. All I'm going to say is, listen, there are times when I think that people should just, uh, you know, just, just stick with what they're best at doing and do that. And focus on that. Don't focus too much on having conversations with people in public. Listen, I can all. understand why you're getting turned off by no allows. Because this dude is a complete clown. The ego on him. And I don't even like putting people down. I don't like I don't like using any sort of platform, like small or large, to talk negatively about people. But you want to talk about a man with an ego, and he has a girlfriend, so he's fine. He's, he's doing fine, and he's an Olympic gold medalist. He's decorated. He's successful. I'm going to give him his flowers, but I'm going to also send him a, a handwritten letter um, talking about why he should probably get his ego in check for many different reasons. And one of those reasons being that it's a turnoff. I'm sorry. It is a turnoff. And, like, I'm not saying everything Noah Lyles does has to be, like, for the female gaze, but, like, when you – what else are you doing it for? Tell me, tell me what else you're doing it for. Be like, let's just be honest. Saying? Call it what it is. And like, I just again, he has a girlfriend, so he's fine with that. But like, if I was his girl, and I heard him talking the way he is, like what he said about Anthony Edwards, he uh, so Anthony Edwards, uh, he has a shoe coming out, and or ha- no, he has a shoe, but they did like some sort of release party in Paris, which is so dope, by the way. Um, this is after, by the way. The the men U.S. men's team won Olympic gold, and because Noah Lyles is also an Olympic gold medalist now, um, I think that he's a little bit more. Uh, he relates a little bit more to the idea of calling himself a world champion, and I love that for him, right? Because you're a world champion now. 
he decided to speak to the press about the fact that he was not going to attend fellow world champion Anthony Edwards' uh, sneaker release party or whatever it was. There was some sort of party happening for him. And he said, why would I go to the party of a guy who hasn't even won an NBA championship? So now is that the – so where, where, what are we doing? So at first – when they win in a, a world, cha- uh, excuse me, the NBA championship, they're they're not world champions. They're just because he said world champions of what? World champions of what? The U.S. That's like how he said it. And so, so that the, so that's the thing. But then you watch. I mean, uh, some of the same guys who won that same championship go and win gold in Paris the same year that you win gold. But now suddenly, one of the guys that won gold with the U.S. men's world championship basketball team. FIBA World Championship Basketball Team, one of those guys has a sneaker, and you can't go to the party because he hasn't won an NBA championship, but it's not even a world championship. So why should that matter? He's won uh, technically an honor that, if his logic is correct, is higher than an NBA championship. This man won an Olympic gold medal. He is a literal world champion. But you won't go to a sneaker release party because you he didn't win an NBA championship that you think is not even anything? Are you? Make it like honestly, Jay. Like, what? What's the logic? Because you speak, man. Tell me what the logic <laughs> is in that. Like, what is that? There is no logic behind <laughs> this. Like, I, I can get what you're saying when you're saying ego. He has a super inflated ego. That ego is is insane. The fact that you will come here and say, first off, the NBA has the best athletes in the world, the best the world. basketball athletes in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is hands down. We know this. Obviously, we yes. just proved it. Yes, yes. The fact that you will sit here and say the champions of what? Uh, of the U.S., okay, we come out and we prove that we're the champions of the world and you still got stuff to Sir. say. And then I, I was telling you the other day when he was on Shannon Sharp and Shannon Sharp asked him, oh, is Nikola Jokic uh, one of the best players in the world? And then this man goes sit here and say he don't know nothing about you. He don't even know who that is. That proves to me you are a clown just talking, just trying to get clout, just trying to get people to say something, to get the conversation stirred around you. Bro, this dude really need to sit down. Yes, you are. You are a gold medalist, and Edwards a gold medalist, too. That's foul what you're doing. And like you said, I don't want to come out here tearing down my black brother. Come on, come now. on now. And that's another thing. Like, we don't even got to make everything about race, but don't you ever come from one of your own again. I'm just playing. But, like, for real. No, for real, no. They ain't playing. Saying, like, I'm not playing. I'm only saying that for anybody who's like, wow. But, no, like, for real. Like, don't you ever. I'm sorry. I get it. Listen, if one of our own murders somebody, I'm coming for you. You know what I'm saying? But you just won an Olympic gold medal. You're having a sneaker release party in Paris, France. This is their 100-year anniversary of when they last hosted the Olympics. This is a big bleeping deal, and you have the nerve to say, I'm not going to that. And, by the way, Jason, this is how I know he has a big ego and he's a hater, and I don't like a hater because not long before that, he had been talking to the press saying, well, what do I got to do to get a shoe? What do I got to do to get a sneaker? They don't ever give track stars like their own sneaker line. I'm sorry, Noah Lyles. They're not going to give somebody who speaks that way about his own fellow American. Fellow gold medalist, gold medal winning American. If you go and like down them and if you go and talk crap about them, why would they give somebody like you a shoe? Because who is going to support and purchase the shoe of Noah Lyles. Nobody buying the Lyles ones. Nobody go buy the know. Lyles twos. Like, what would they even look like? Would they be a track, like a cleat? And that's great, but Jason, he shot himself in the foot. Like, he did. Like, who would want to support that? I'm sorry. By the way, though, he has talked about mental health issues, but uh uh-uh, don't do that. Because guess what? Mental health is not an excuse for being a jerk. It's not an excuse to be an a-hole. It's just not. You saw you saw me. I I, I fell I for it real quick. I, immediately you did. And I love that you're empathetic. That's cute. Now we all know that he's an empath. But no, I don't. Th- I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. It's not an excuse because we all go through our mental health struggles. And I'm not like if I'm mean or whatever. Call me out. I'm self aware. I love it. I'll self reflect. I'll apologize, etc. This man ain't never shown no remorse, and he means everything he says. You know what I'm saying? And he's like an outward hater. Imagine being a hater like for real. Like just being a hater just to hate. Like, what's that like? I can't relate to that. I have no clue. I've never felt that feeling. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. But no, no allows. Nobody's going to buy no allow, no allow shoes. Nobody want to run in no allow shoes. If you are a little bit, I don't even want to say humble because I, I kind of don't like the word humble. Because mm-hmm. what humble, the definition of humble is 
like showing yourself low importance. And I don't oh. agree with that. I think everybody is extremely important. However, I do think he needs to get his ego in check and he really needs to read the room, bro. You got to read the room. You have to. It's important. Like, imagine, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't even make this comparison, but I was going to say, imagine if somebody with that big of an ego tried to run for president right now. And then as soon as I started thinking that, I'm like, mm, ah, I'm not going to make comparisons, but. <laughs> we already we already got that, Mel. <laughs> Let me stop. This is not a political show. But speaking of, though, I mean, we talked about women, like, dominating the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? And I know we kind of got off track a little bit with the Noah Lyles of it all. Necessary conversation, though, because, Noah, if you're watching this, and I know you are, <laughs> don't be so egotistical and, like, get some PR training because women don't, like, when men talk like that. That's what he needs. He, he ain't needs had PR no training. media training. Like, where's your media training? Where's your, where's your publicist? Does he have an agent? I know his publicist is mad. Mad. And his girlfriend's probably like, shut up. You shut embarrassing up. me, bro. Like, Stop. Shut up. Just shut up. Ah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so, like I said, it's not a political show, but I, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Kamala Harris. The DNC uh, literally actually just started today, by the way, in Chicago. Um, so, so crazy, by the way, that the DNC was there. RNC right here. Like, shout out to the Midwest. Woo woo. Hey, we know where they're trying to get their votes. Let's get it. Hey, I get it, though. Um, but that being said, though, I can't believe that we might be seeing a, a U.S. that has a female president. And I think it's about time. I know you talked about how you like history. So I love presidential history. And I love uh, learning everything there's to know about the presidents and the first ladies. A lot of the presidents, um, they were strongly uh, supported, I'll say, by their wives. A lot of them, believe it or not, were uh, like very instrumental in a lot of the decisions that presidents used to make. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have often said, like, the president is the figurehead, if you will. That's fine and well, whatever it may be. But I feel like we're not going to say that when Kamala Harris is in office. I Because I just, I know how we are. I now I know how us women operate. I don't know how the government operate at that level now. I don't know if they're gonna, you know, strap her down and say, You will say what we tell you. Like I don't know how it goes, you know what I'm saying? In the Oval Office when the cameras aren't up. But I do know that us women, we don't listen to like y'all being like, pipe down, you do this instead. We're gonna be like ex <laughs> cute. Now this is what we're actually gonna do. And I love that. And and I'm hoping that we have that energy, but not in like I don't want to use the word aggressive because I feel like that's a word that people like to use when they talk about black and brown women who are uh, assertive. Yeah, that, that negative stereotype. You feel me? Because yeah. aggressive, it has a very negative connotation about it. But I love the thought that we will potentially, and I'm, I want to speak it into existence, we will have a female president uh, come November 2024. And I'd like to think that we're going to see something in the White House like we've never seen before. But, Jason, real talk. And if you are not supportive of Kamala Harris uh, for president, this is not about politics. So I want to be clear before we continue. Is the country ready for a woman to be in charge? Like for a woman to be the figurehead in charge? Yes. We, we are. are. We are ready. It's time. Okay. Um, I Men think that we have ready? evolved okay. as a nation. We okay. evolved. We got rid of those archaic rules or or, or the, our, that archaic mindset yeah, that women part. are second class citizens that right. that black people second class it like we got rid of that yeah. we, we are growing it's time for a woman president i'm ready to listen i'm just a fan of, like i said i'm a fan of history yeah. and obviously this is history in the making yes so i'm all cool with it yeah. i'm all cool with it however mm. like i was just saying on wtmj okay and i was saying on the truth I do. I don't want to make it political. No, it's not political. It's not political at all. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> People got to understand it's not political. No, no. I think we're ready for um, a woman president because we're ready for a new perspective. We're oh. ready for a new way of looking at how we can handle these issues. Because obviously men and women think a little differently. I know. You know what I'm saying? So I'm ready to. See, and I like the way she handles stuff. Like, yeah. you know, when, when, when she getting heckled at um, rallies and stuff, the way she shut it down. Quick, yeah. You know? Yeah. We need that. I think so too. And okay, so so I I learned a trick. Like actually, back when uh, when uh, Biden declared her as his running mate, I learned that her name is Kamala because Mamala. And the reason why I say that that's how I always remember how to pronounce her name because you know you hear all the different pronunciations. Kamala. Everybody say Kamala. Uh, right. Or yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's actually you're right. That's the one. No, it's Kamala, like Mamala. So my point in bringing that up 
A, so you remember, but then B, mom energy. I like the idea of having like a mom figure in the White House because I think that, and, and Jason, this is something where I've had this debate with so many people. A lot of folks say, in a per like if if you had to choose which parent for your daughter specifically your daughter to be raised by majority of people that I've spoken to and like based on like studies I've seen have said a man is better suited to raise a daughter than a woman if one single parent was only allowed which I thought was interesting so then I think about it like okay but who would be better fit to run a country or raise a country full of men and women you know boys and girls you know, they's, we love y'all too. Like, I, I want to know, like, wh who would be the best type of person to run the country that we are right now? Because the country we were even four years ago is different, you know, and it does change every four years, I would argue, you know, and I, and I think that it's great that we set the limit at four years before we got to reelect because it's like, OK, you know, some temperatures have changed. You know, we're the the way that the, the Earth's uh, rotational axis happens like we also rotate. You know what I mean? Like, I genuinely think that we as a country, we're not staying stagnant. I think it's great. But are we currently a nation that is ready to be raised and nurtured by a woman or do we still need a man? In power, like, are we at that point as a nation yet? I think. Listen, yes, we ready for a woman. We done had what forty six men already, and they couldn't figure out what to do. None of y'all. So I'm, I'm just looking. The main reason why I'm, you know what I'm saying, excited or or or, or ready for a woman president is like I said, change the difference. Yeah. Like. It's just we need to try something new. I'm sick of old white man coming in here. Yes, we had Obama, yeah. but the rest is sick of old but white like man in here. we've had middle-aged men, middle-aged plus men. Precisely. Yeah, the, to your point, the perspective is very similar because, you know, love you, Obama, always, forever, but it's not that far off from the perspectives that we had prior and after him. You're right. Exactly. It's the I same. Mean, yeah, it, it is the same, essentially, it, and that perspective is the male gaze. I mean, I'm sorry. So you're right. And it's so hard, Jason, to have this conversation as a woman and not come off as a man hater because um, something that uh, one of our co-hosts, Sherwin Hughes, um, what I oh, no, it was it was Dr. Ken Harris, but Sherwin as well, because he, you know, he talks politics a lot. Um, he was all up in the RNC. Uh, but both of them, <laughs> he was happy. man, what both of them were. Both of them was uh, geek to be in there. <laughs> I know they were. But both of them, they're the types where if you say I'm voting for such and such, their immediate response is, okay, well, why? And I love that because I do think that everyone needs to be educated. I hate that, you know, we've reached a point where we feel like we're voting for the lesser of two evils. But guess what, Jason? Ever since the year 1776, everyone in this country has felt like they are voting for the lesser of two, lesser of two evils. Ever since. And actually, I shouldn't say that because George Washington is actually, fun fact, the only president that was not elected into office. They just kind of gave him the position because they were like, well, somebody got to start it. So, yeah, anyway. Um, but my point, people have always felt like they're voting for the lesser of the two evils. And I want to get to a point where we just feel um, it'll never be uh, the total amount, but it'll be the majority where majority of us are feeling like, to your point, we're ready this change. We want something new. We want something that we haven't seen before, but also something that feels familiar. And if there's one thing that I think feels familiar to most, not to all, because everyone's living situation is different, is that of a, a mother. I think that most people have some sort of mom figure in their life. It's an aunt, whether it's your actual mom, your teacher, like it's somebody that's in your life. And I think that think about all the women mentors that you've ever had or just mother figures could one of them be a female, like the next president? And I shouldn't say a female president. That sounds so bad, Jason. Like I got to get that type of like language out of my mind. I'm sorry. But, but you, but you do got to be a little bit descriptive right now, so we I know. Do. Yeah, I so do. people know. But yeah, I think that's a valid question. Like, is there a woman in your life that you've looked up to who you could see running this country and running it the best way that you've seen? Without question, my auntie. Oh, I love that. The woman that. who raised me. I love it. The smartest, most amazing woman ever. I didn't look at it from the perspective of a motherly. But that's uh, what it would be. You know what I'm that's saying? That's literally what it would be. Yeah. So, I, I, not a, hey, listen, you're opening my mind. But, yes, I definitely believe that my auntie would be a great president. And now putting that in perspective, uh, hey, listen, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm liking Kamala. Yeah. Because, like, I like that perspective yeah. of a mom caring for 
her kids, I caring mean, for her, her troop. And the thing is, it takes a village, you know what I mean? And so there are people who, there's going to be, let's be honest, people who are like real deep into the political rabbit hole. But again, this is not a political show. We, it's not about politics. We're just talking about perspective Perspective. Right this is just about perspective. That's a great way of putting it. Thank you. Um, and so I, I, I want to be clear and say that because I don't want people to be like, oh, y'all kept it so surface. You didn't go into the depths. We're not doing that. That's not the point. We're just talking. This is perspective. But from my perspective, I don't know if white men are ready to be led by a brown woman. I don't know. This I'm one, not they saying. Worst fears. I think it may be because, but but that's the thing, though, Jason. At the same time, I think white men love brown women, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that like in a token. way. I'm saying I really do think there's a lot of love for, and we've seen that in history for black and brown women. Like I genuinely do believe that. But are they ready to be led by those same black and brown women that they have put on whatever pedestal they put them on, whether it was the sexy pedestal or the I respect you or like the you're going to get things done because you're a bossy. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. But I feel, again, back to the point that I originally made, I think our nation is ready for a mom figure. I think we've had a lot of dads raising us. And I think that, you know, the dads did the best that they could. But it's 2024 now. And I think that. There's a there's a relatability in Kamala, and I think that there's something there that everyone can, I, I, I guess, pull from their own life and see, like, her in whatever that may be in their life, you know? And, again, if nothing, if you can't look at her and see the relatability, I'm sure there's somebody in your life that you've had as a mom figure. I've had dad figures in my life, yeah, but we all have because every single president in our lifetime has been a male and yeah we don't all look at them as like a dad of course but i'm just saying like that's kind of like a representation of the dad of america you know what i mean um the founding fathers who's our founding mother what like who who helped give birth to the nation you mean to tell me that adam did it all on his own or whatever man you believe in did it all on his own i'm Mel just saying getting deep i didn't think about that who is the founding mothers I, where's she at do they don't have we have never learned nothing about no founding mothers. Where are the women? That's crazy. It is crazy. And there's so much. And that's why I said um, I love learning and reading about not just the presidents, but the first ladies, because there's so much story there with them alone. And often when you learn their story, you learn even more about the president and why he made the decisions that he made. It really is very, very intriguing. Um, okay. So that was where we got a little bit into the politics of it all. Uh, we talked a little bit about Kamala, but again, this is not a political show. And, you know, I, I like using metaphors, Jason. Like, you know, I said how she could, in a sense, be like the, our founding mother. But is it too late? Is 2024 too late to have a founding mom? Yeah, it's too late, man. Is it too late? Like, I mean, because it's not, we not already, we too do bad. But is, this, but is it a new America? If we say in a new America, maybe, but how many people really gonna get behind? The is it, idea but is of it a new inevitably America? a new America with it being the first female president? Because like Obama, that was like, I mean, it really was. I, we didn't know if we would see that in our lifetime, so it's amazing. But like, did that feel like a new? You know what I'm saying? Like for some reason, I feel like this is even more groundbreaking because Obama was a man. He was a black man, but he's still a man. I don't know why. Am I being biased by no, saying that? No, I think, me personally, I think Kamala is more groundbreaking. One, because she's a woman. Mm -hmm. And two, because no matter what, Obama, yes, Obama was black, but he was still half white. Right. We got Kamala, she purely ethnic. She half yes. Indian, then half yes. Afro-Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. And on top of being a woman, oh, this this different. Because she don't got no, she's not, white is not her, one of her dominant yeah, yeah, races. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be the first time ever mm. there's a president without that's not at least half white. Right. So when, if you're talking about, okay, the new America founding lady of the new America, I guess that would depend on where the country goes after she becomes, or if she becomes president. Like yeah. if, there, if, it, if we see a, um, a rise and, and we see us grow as a country to the point where we're saying it's a new America, she's going to be at the forefront of that. Mm, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Well, and I feel like she is going to almost like open up the the door for like so many other different like um, what I want to say uh, uh, other different types of presidents to come through. You feel me? I remember uh, Daryl from The Office. He said once that he wanted to live to see a black president. 
And he was like, well, and now I already saw the asshole. Now I want to see a female president. And then I want to see an Asian president. I want to see all the presidents. And, like, that's valid because, like, that's some that's a, a real thing. Like, now that we've seen this, what else are we capable of? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like Obama kind of did that. But then we went right back to the old, you know what I'm saying? We went right back to, and we got worse because we went to the old man. Like, <laughs> man, we couldn't even stay in the 50s or nothing like that. We <laughs> had to go to the late 70s? Jesus. And that's another thing. Age is just a whole other thing. But we, we can't have time to get into all that. But, like, I just, I, I feel like, yeah, like, Kamala, I do believe she's going to be the next president of the United States of America. I do. I'm going to cry. I think we're all going to cry. Um, and I do just hope and pray that even those who didn't vote for her, those who don't uh, necessarily find themselves um, aligning with the Democratic Party, even those who maybe felt like it, it wasn't the choice that they would have made, I genuinely hope and pray that every single person that has a little girl in their life teaches them about Kamala, teaches them about her background. Like, try to separate your beliefs, your political party, and try to help your daughter or your niece or your cousin or whoever understand that they are literally capable of anything, you know? And I really, like, I pray, I truly honestly do, everybody is able to do that and recognize just how incredible that is and really how, like, miraculous that is. Because I, I think it's safe to say that this is a, an America, like, one we could have never really imagined, you know, just all the things that have happened in the 21st century um, in especially after the terror that was, you know, 9-11 and just the events that happened after and then like COVID and all of that. It's remarkable that we're at this point where like we really are likely going to see our first female president. And I hope people can put aside their beliefs and teach their daughters like, hey, this is Kamala Harris, president, Madam President Kamala Harris. And this is how she got to where she is. Like I even if the Republican nominee even if they were uh, if they were a female, excuse me, and they won, I would make sure I did that for my little sister. Even if I my my beliefs don't align typically with the Republican Party, I have a little bit of both. You know what I'm saying? Um, but typically, I do more uh, lean toward left. However, that being said, that doesn't mean I always vote left. I'm gonna always vote for the person that I feel is best suited for the job. And I think that right now, Kamala Harris is that person. And I think we're ready. I think we are. And talking to you, Jason, actually makes me feel better about it. Because I, I just wasn't sure how many men would be ready for a woman to the truly be The representation? That, dude, that's, that's another whole other factor. The representation of a woman being president. What that's doing for little girls I know. who's seeing that. Like, it's amazing. Dude, like for me, Obama becoming president, I was eight years old. I remember it like it was yesterday. You do? I, you remember 2012, it? I was actually at the inauguration. Like, wow. seeing a black dude... As president, I it, know. it really made me believe anything is possible. I know. And I think one reason why I, how I live the way I live is due to even I don't I, I didn't have to that. agree with nothing Obama said. Yeah. Just seeing him up it. there I made know. me believe that yep. anything is possible. Yep. So what that's about to do for little girls and young women? I know. Come on, man. I know it. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, again, I just really hope that men are are ready for that and allow Kamala to be successful in that job. You know what I mean? Because um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I tend to come back to this whole ego thing that we've talked about. And going back to that debate, you know, about the uh, NBA championship, whether or not it's the world championship, and then having a gold medal, I'm curious, which one is more prestigious? Which one is a higher honor? Let us know in the comments what y'all think. Do you think that it's more prestigious to hold the honor of being an NBA world champion? And I'm going to continue to say world champion because that is what we call it. Um, or an Olympic gold medal medalist, excuse me. Would you only, or excuse me, if you could only do one, sorry. Which one do you think is more prestigious? Which one would you rather go for? I have been having this debate with my friend oh. for about a week. Oh, this is a debate debate. Back and forth, oh. back and forth. The NBA championship, yeah, is more prestigious. It is than okay. The Olympic gold medal Why? for uh -huh. Americans, for oh, okay. people like yes, America. Fair. The the reason why is we have the greater competition. This is the way I put it. Okay, we got the Olympics. 
that's proven who's the best in the world, right? That's yeah. number one. Okay, America, we got the gold medal. We get it every year. It's set in stone. America is the best. We have the best basketball players in the world. We are yeah. the best. Now, the NBA championship, that's showing who's the best of the best. Right. That's showing who's the of 1% course. of the 1%. Who's the point yeah. one one Who's the point one percent uh-huh. of the 1%? Right. Who's the tippity top of the best? It's the NBA championship. You're going against lesser competition in the world. Like, yes, you're going against other NBA players. It's sick. For example, the team this year went against 61 NBA players. Mm. 61. In the NBA, they're going against 500 right, NBA right. players every every game. So, like, listen. we have every country's best basketball players. In it's our NBA league. players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that makes sense. And did you know that the NBA is actually the second most popular sport in the world, only behind soccer? Yeah, in the world. That's amazing. And so, the second most popular sport in the world happens to be based in, you know what I mean? Like, the, the largest league that is, is in America. And like you said, all of the best basketball players from every country. I don't think, and, and correct me if I am wrong, please in the comments correct me. I don't think there's a single country that has one of the best basketball players in the world that is not playing in the NBA. I'm sorry. And if so, he's probably on his way out. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? But I'm sorry. If you're the best of the best, you're in the NBA. Period. That's the goal to That's get to the NBA. That's just what it is. It's not being cocky. That is fact. So... Why is it that you can't consider yourself to be a world champion when you are literally playing amongst the best in the world at that sport? At that sport. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but that's not the discussion. So you say that an NBA championship is more. Okay. Okay, and I get that from a Hooper's perspective and from an American's perspective, right? Because in other countries, because they don't necessarily always have the same opportunities we have on a, a world stage. You know what I mean? Because like I said, the NBA is the second most popular sport in the world. And that is a fact. Um, the views that they get don't necessarily match the same as like the Super Bowl. But the Super Bowl is like a it's like a national event. But the NBA uh, playoffs, that's a world event. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something where people are literally tuning in globally for that. You don't get the same amount of tune in for the Super Bowl. That you get everybody around the nation. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Grocery stores are closed. Yeah, definitely. Mm hmm. But it's one game for one game versus NBA playoffs for uh, what is it six eight weeks you're getting global viewership and really all season you are but especially during the playoffs so I agree with you so I think that uh, an Olympic gold medal is probably more prestigious however if I had to choose I would want it would rather be an NBA champion because th- basketball is life you know what I'm saying ball is life but. I'm an American, and basketball is my favorite sport. So it's just a little bit different. You know what I mean? But I like that debate. What did your friend say? It's No, it's a good debate. and Because, like, I understand both perspectives. I understand the gold medal. Listen, you are representing your country. Like, you are the top country um, in the world at what you do. Yeah. I get it. I love it. I would love a gold medal, too. Right. But like you said, if you were to put a, a Larry O'Brien in front of me in a gold medal, I'm pretty sure every single NBA player – would take that. I, I, I think so, man, too. Man, yes, of course, other countries, they don't view the they view the Olympic gold medal higher, but yeah. that's because they don't, like you said, they don't have an NBA championship. Yeah, yeah. If they was over here, yeah. they wouldn't want that NBA It'd championship. It'd be different. That's what, cemented, and that's what cemented you. Right. And well, and so many people come out of, okay, like, let, real quick, the sharpshooters that were coming out of, like, Turkey and coming out of South Korea, they went viral they don't. They probably wouldn't have gotten that same type of view. You know, I'm just saying. You no, it's, it's a fact. Rude. You're not hating on the countries. It's I'm a not fact. Hating. I'm not hating. I support everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's giving love. But like real talk, I'm sorry. I didn't know about the sharpshooter from Turkey who was out there with his hand in his pocket, wearing a white t-shirt and no glasses, and he divorced his wife three weeks before the. Why would I know that information if not because of the Olympics? I'm just saying. And I'm here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I noticed about this Turkish man because of the Olympics. Versus the NBA playoffs. I'm sorry, but you're you're gonna know more about these NBA athletes because you're probably watching it a little bit more around the world than you are watching sharpshooting around the world. So to that point, I think that a lot of other countries they're gonna view it more prestigiously because this is their opportunity to have that global platform, to have lenses on their sport that you don't typically have. And a lot of these countries, they're a lot smaller, obviously. And so for them to win a gold medal in that sport, that's a big deal. But also, you know, that really comes down to, like, whose country is the best, the most dominant, the most fittest, the most beautiful. Mm. 
So USA number one. Uh, we continue number this. one. Hey, listen, it is what it is. Like people can't get mad at me so stating funny. the fact. No. Listen, if a, a tree grows from the ground, uh, <laughs> like you know what I'm. The sky is blue. USA, we're the best. When Number it comes one. to this Olympic stuff, this is what we do. We're why? the best at these sports. Why? Like, come on. Why? What is it? What What you say? Like, why are we? Resources? Why are we the best? I think, I'm going to give you, like, it's probably the boring answer. Oh, okay. But I think we just invest more into it. Like, we mm. invest more in our sports. We mm. invest more in the technology. We invest more in the medicine. So, listen, by default, we become the best. But you know what's interesting? We can't get too cocky because... The basketball world used to be dominated by Americans, and the NBA is now half and half. You know what I'm saying? So I, I and I, you made me think of that because once people figure out how to do what we do, it's like, oh, on what? Y'all could do that too? You feel me? Like, I think a lot of it is us figuring things out maybe first or figuring out how to do it on a high level first. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we're the inventor of all things, but – like basketball, for example, the first time a uh, basketball game was played was in Canada. It wasn't even in the U.S. So I'm not saying we're like the inventor of all the things, but I think that we do invest. We spend a lot of money. You know, we we uh, utilize a lot of different resources, and we will do everything we have to do to be the best at something. But I think other countries, once they figure it out, they very quickly catch up to us. You know what I mean? No, because they we, catch up. But up. we often set the blueprint. They catching up. Yeah. I think that I ain't going to lie. I'm actually scared. For next Olympics, Heck the reason yeah, why, K- I'm not sure KD go be there. I'm not LeBron, sure Steph Curry go Steph. be there. I'm not sure LeBron go be there. I don't think I, any of them. Any of them. So I'm. Tr- I, so we basically got to just hope people like Aunt Edwards, because I was yeah. going to say like Shay. Shay not even from here, because Shay in Canada. Canada. We got yeah. Giannis in Greece. We yeah. got Jokic yeah. over there. I know. We got Luca and so. I know. So we got to just hope and pray that these young stars rise up and we have our next step, yes. KDs and LeBrons. Because yes. if we don't, it's sad. And, dog, they're training now. You feel me? The Olympics just ended, and they are getting ready. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. So, okay. I could talk about that debate literally all day. I could talk about, like, women dominating all day. Like, I just think that it's so great that, you know, it's like a nice little marriage of the Olympics and seeing, like, women dominating, and then you see Kamala Harris running for president. Like, how cool is it? Like, all of these different things. But they all kind of, like, make sense, and they go together. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so interesting watching the world, like, just evolve right in front of our eyes. It's like everything happening mm-hmm. the way it's supposed to happen. It everything is. happening at the right timing. Even though we don't think it's the most, a lot of people don't think it's the right timing. I know, but no, it's the Gotta right timing. It. Everything is happening the way it's supposed to happen. And you know what, Jason? The universe does a real good job reminding you of things happening when they're supposed to be happening. Like they say, like real life is stranger than fiction, and it is. It is. It is. I've had things happen to me this summer, Jason, where I have to take a picture of it. And I'm like, you wouldn't believe me unless I show you it. So I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to tell you the story that I go with it. Like, that's happened to me a few times this summer, Jason, where I'm literally like, I know you won't believe this, but guess what just happened to me? It's crazy. I, like, when, even when I'm watching these scary movies, if you really notice, a lot of scary movies based off of true stories. They're based off of true stories. Most of them are. Most of them are, Jason. And you're like, speaking of... Friday the 13th is based off of one. Jason, no. But Me. No. <laughs> I'm right here. I and love no, it. like, do it. Even the, um, like, when I'm watching the 2020 specials, like the um, the true crime documentaries, man, they'll be more eerie than the scary movies. They and that's horrible. real. Like, it'd be stuff you won't even, you I can't, can't even watch fathom it. happening in real life. I know. And this happens every day. It's so scary. It's so scary. Like, oh, my God, there's so many things. And I, I follow certain things, like the Idaho 4. I still follow that because I, I need that trial to start. It's been almost two years since those poor college students were literally slaughtered in their home and they were like so young and vibrant this happened in idaho this little sleepy town in moscow idaho you know what i'm saying but things can happen anywhere we know that but yeah to your point like it's just so crazy all of these different things that happen and like just the way that we see the world evolve but i love the reminders that the universe sends us that we're in the right place at the right time and i'm super happy that we're here together doing our first show together First show. I Come love on, it. on. It's going amazing. It is going amazing. Okay. What do we have next, Jason? It's time, man. I got some questions for you. You got questions? Oh, boy. Okay. I got some questions. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. This is a fun little game I like to call Rapid Response. Oh, we're doing rapid is, questions. Okay. This is where I'm going to okay. ask Mel. 
mm-hmm. you know, just some quick questions. And I want to get her, I want to get her answered. We go see how Mel do. We go see what's on Mel mind. Ew. First question I got for Miss Melanie Ricks. Who is the most influential woman in your life? Oh, definitely my mom. My mom, for sure. My mom is somebody who, like, I still, at my grown age, I, I go to her for everything. Yeah. And, like, if I'm sick, I just, I tell my mom. You know what I mean? And then, like, if I want advice, like, even, I had to send an email the other day. And I, like, it was like, can you write this up for me first? And then I'll tweak it and make it sound like I wrote it. No, but, like, for real, like, there are times when I'm just, like, I don't know how to, like, start this email or finish this or whatever. And my mom always helps me. Okay, boom. Shout out, mom. Yeah, you said Shout rapid out, fire. We go quick. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, second question. If you could have dinner with any female entertainer, Ooh, who would it be? Oh, Meg Thee Stallion. I need her to teach me to twerk after we finish dessert. All right, Meg. I, okay, I thought she was going to have to think a little bit. You no, already know. I Like I said, we're going to twerk after dessert. <laughs> okay, the twerk <laughs> lessons from male, no, from Meg to male. Thank you. Eminem. All right, let's see. Third question is there a female artist who defined a generation oh man to come to mind i'm gonna say missy elliott definitely missy elliott but she's the go but the other person that came to mind was lil kim i think that both of them did define the generation the 90s in particular but in different ways but missy elliott i i heard well both of them their influence is still felt by not even just like female rappers or entertainers, but like by the music industry as a whole and production and beats and everything. Yeah. When it comes first off, when it comes to production, Missy Elliott is on what? a different What people world. don't understand, like her dancers, her visuals, her production, I mean, even her lyrics, like everything that she does, she puts everything into it. I think she's one of the greatest artists of all time. I think that she is so underappreciated. I really do. And when it comes to bars, Lil Kim. Man, come what? On now. Come Lil on Kim now. Got some bars. Yeah, she does. And she's the first one to make like female rap be like sexy and feminine like i feel like the female rappers before then not to say y'all aren't sexy shout out mc light but like i just think that like it, it still was like a what what i'm kicking it with the that was more hard yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. yeah well because you had to vibe with the guys you feel me like it was just different and i feel like Lil kim was like mm, no i'm cute you know what i mean and i love that about her fourth question mm. if you could swap lives with any woman in history oh boy who would it be Oh, man. Marilyn Monroe, because I need to know what happened to her. No, I'm just kidding. Um, If I could swap lives with anybody, it, it wouldn't be Marilyn. That sounds like a horrible, awful life. Yeah, because at first I was like, who are you sure? No, 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 not her. Probably Eartha Kitt. I feel like she lived such a beautiful, illustrious life, and she had a very storied life. I like the way that she, <clears throat> like, overcame so many different obstacles, as a lot of people do. Um, but I love that she was never afraid to express herself. And I love that what she did for entertainment, for women in entertainment. Um, and Santa Baby is still one of my absolute favorite songs. When I was a kid, I used to sing the song Santa Baby at auditions. It's very inappropriate, though, because it's literally about getting a guy to buy you, like, a Corvette for Christmas. I was, like, eight. I'm, like, Santa Baby. Like, when I was, Are like, you eight. you over singing it going crazy? Man, what? My mom's over there, like, mastroing it. And the, the people I'm auditioning for was probably, like, who's her mom and why is she singing this? But, yeah. <laughs> Last and final question. This actually, this is a pretty good question. This probably go. This probably will be a little tough. Okay. Oprah Winfrey or Michelle Obama? Oh man, who is more empowering? Oh God, why would you do this? Ah, uh, it's tough. That's a tough one. I know, I know, but what? I had to end you off with a with the right one. Oh my God, it's the last segment of the day. Come on, man, we got it. We had to end off on a high note. Okay, okay, no, that's valid. Michelle Obama or Oprah Winfrey? Okay, I am going to plead the fifth and say both. I think that I know, I know, I know. But Mel, come on now. Uh, empowering. Okay, so I think that Oprah was more empowering in the '90s, and I think that Michelle Obama completely took over um, in 2008. I do. I think that. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say Michelle. Okay, and this is why. This is why. Because Oprah is from a different generation. She's from a different time. And unfortunately, there are a lot of clips that have now gone viral from the Oprah show. For example, she was asking Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen, like, oh, how much do you weigh? And do you actually eat? And, like, do you, you know, how do you feel about when people talk about your weight? Like, she would ask very invasive questions that now would be so inappropriate. And she came from a different time. Like, you know, Oprah had her issues with weight and all of that like she was very open about it 
but some of the things that she would ask women in particular, people felt like she was kind of acting like a, a, a man in that sense, where like men, um, especially like like talk show hosts in like the, the 50s and the 60s, they were kind of inappropriate with women and would touch them or kiss them inappropriately, like just ask really inappropriate questions. And they felt like Oprah was along the lines of those type of men who just like, just ask really invasive and just questions that you shouldn't. And Michelle Obama, obviously, like she was, uh, she came to prominence in a, during a different time in 2008. And I love that she started the health program for kids. Um, I was a part of it. I, 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 we, she got some dance with Beyonce that yes, I had to did. do at my fifth grade graduation. Are you serious, Jason? Okay, stop. I love it. So you would say Michelle, too. Oh, yeah. For no, sure, you Michelle. would. Well, Michelle, she's like, she's a new age type of empower, like a female empowerment type of mentor. You know what I'm saying? Like, she just comes from a new era. And I think, you know, going back to where we started ish, Kamala, she's a new era. You know what I mean? She comes from a different generation where the Oprahs, we love her. Anytime people ask me what I want to be in life, I say the next Oprah. Like, I still really look up to her, but she comes from a different time and she's a creature of her time. And Michelle Obama, she more so represents where we want women to be today and in the future. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I would say Michelle, but I love you all. Love you. All right, and I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. Y'all are the best. Did I do this right? Is that right? Did I do it right? Yeah, you did it right. It, looked, it looked right in the camera. I hear that it's this for millennials, but then this for... Wait, what do you do with these fingers? You don't know? I look like Drake. That look like don't Drake it, sign. You it, know, his um his, his OVO sign. 100% it does. I just want to be clear. I am not OVO gang, but... I might consider it Drake, so you just hit me up. Let me know how you feel. Um, but go USA. We're not Team Canada. Um, not at all. Not even a little bit. But we are Team Nothing But The Truth, and I appreciate you, Jason. Our debut show, we hope that you liked it. Let us know in the comments how you felt. Give us all your thoughts and opinions. We would love to hear everything that y'all have to say. Jason, I really appreciate you. I really do. No, I appreciate you, Mel. This is uh, this is the first start of a long journey. Yes. And listen, we about to kick it up a notch. Boop, boop, boop. You already know. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. The first episode of Nothing But The Truth with Melanie Ricks. We'll see you next week. Bye.